Hello ladies and gentlemen, Secure Tool here bringing you another Minecraft World 1 BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building Japanese battleship Mikasa. Mikasa is a pre-dreadnought battleship built for the Imperial Japanese Navy in the late 1890s. Named after Mount Mikasa in Nara, Japan, the ship served as the flagship of Vice Admiral Togo Hariachu throughout the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 through 1905, including the Battle of Port Arthur on the second day of the war and the battles of the Yellow Sea and Shishima. Days after the end of the war, Mikasa's magazine accidentally exploded in the sh and sank the ship. She was salvaged and her repairs took over two years to complete. Afterwards, the ship served as a coastal defense sh uh, ship during World War I and supported Japanese forces during the Siberian intervention in Russian Civil War. After 1922, Mikasa was decommissioned in accordance with the Washington Naval Treaty and preserved as a museum ship as at Yokosuka. She was badly neglected during the post-World War II occupation of Japan and required extensive refurbishing in the late 1950s. She has been partially restored and is now a museum ship located at Mikasa Park in Yokosuka. Mikasa is the last remaining example of a pre-dreadnought battleship anywhere in the world and also the last example of a British-built battleship still existing. So yeah, the IGA Mikasa here, a pretty cool uh, ship. Again, it's kind of a pre-dreadnought design, so not the typical dreadnoughts, the more uh, prominent ones we saw in World War One. Yeah, by the time World War One came around, she was definitely outdated for the time. Um, but she still is a really cool ship and um, a kind of cool pre World War One um, ship to add to our BAFTA build fleet. Um, so going ahead and diving into it, uh, the ship currently on display is done up in a gray color scheme. Though looking through historic of photos and stuff like that, it looked like it did have a black and white color scheme. So as the camera the color scheme I went ahead and went with. Um, very traditional of ships during that time. Again, a black hull and white superstructure. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So the Mikasa here, really cool looking ship. We have the front bow of the ship, nothing too fancy. And it's followed up with her uh, front turret, which is actually a rotatable turret and has uh, a dual barrel um, design to it. Uh, we then have the bridge for it. Again, very low profile, simple bridge. All the rigging, the masts, and all that stuff. We have the, the midship here, which has the two funnels. Again, lots of lifeboats and whatnot located in this area. Uh, a few kind of uh, anti-aircraft guns, really not a whole lot. Um, just a couple. I mean, they're probably more point defense guns, if anything, um, during that time. We then had uh, all the secondary batteries, which are located on the side here, basically a giant broadside of the ship, so really cool looking um, design there for that. And then we have the um, the mast here, so we have the rear mast, and we have the uh, kind of rear deck with the second uh, main turret located on the back here. So overall, it's a really cool looking ship, came out really awesome, and is going to make an awesome addition to any of your uh, BAFTA build worlds. If you're looking for a cool little museum ship to add, or just a ship um, in general for kind of a World War One or pre-World War One scenario. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer of the build, we will be going ahead and starting with layer 1. Now, a quick thing to go ahead and mention here is if you do want to build this ship in the water, I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do this, you will want to make sure that layer 1 here starts basically a block underneath the water level. The blue concave here is representing that water level, it's going to sit basically one block below that, and once you have that sorted out, you are good to go ahead and build the ship. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to apply that red concrete block, we're also going to place down a piston that's upside down like so. If you are on um, a version other than Java and don't have access to a piston, you can go ahead and substitute this out for a brick upside down stair. And that brick upside down stair, um, we will actually be using red nether brick, so I'm going to grab that real quick. Um, but you can go ahead and actually place down a red nether brick stair upside down like that as an alternative. We're going to go then place down a red nether brick top slab going forward from that, and then on both sides of this block here, we're going to place down an acacia wood sign. After that's done, we're going to take our red concrete, we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 red concrete blocks, and then a red nether brick upside down stair on the back here. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down two brick walls going back and then a red stained glass pane to go ahead and form the rudder. And actually, instead of those brick walls, we will be going ahead and using red nether brick. So red nether brick here, just a bit of a better looking um, choice. So we're going to go ahead and use that instead. 
Um, after that is all finished there, we're going to go ahead and then go to our second to last red concrete block. So this one here, and we're going to place down a red narrow brick upside down stair. We're going to go ahead and then go off of that with a lightning rod to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and then place down an acacia wood fence gate, which we're going to open up the fence gate toward the stair. On the side of the fence gate as well, we're going to place down an acacia wood sign. Again, this will go on both sides there. Coming off the acacia wood signs, we're going to place down a birch wood slab to both sides to go ahead and form your um, propellers there on the back. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and then take a red concrete. We're going to go ahead and go forward from the narrow brick stairs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 blocks, followed by a red nether brick wall and two red stained glass panes forward. We're going to do the same thing here on the other side. So just like that. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and uh, then build our sides going out further. Uh, this could be done by placing down a case with trap door on both sides of the second red concrete block here. And then we're going to go and then place down two red stained glass panes and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, red nether brick walls and two red stained glass panes back from that. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. And that will basically finish up what we have here for layer one. So taking a look at it from the top down view, this is what you should have for, again, the top down view with this layer all complete. And um, yeah, once you have that done, uh, that's pretty much it for that layer. And with that, let's move on to layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two to begin, we're going to place down a red stained glass pane here, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 uh, red concrete blocks back, and then a red nether brick top slab on the very end. We're going to go ahead and then place down an acacia wood trap door to both sides of this last red concrete block. We're going to go ahead and then place down a red nether brick top slab, a red nether brick upside down stair, and a red nether brick upside down corner stair like that going forward. Same thing will be done on this side as well, so just like that on both sides. We're going to go ahead and then take our red concrete. We're going to build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 red concrete blocks, a red nether brick wall, and two red stained glass panes forward. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So just like that, all the way back to our corner stair. Now after that, we're going to go ahead and continue building out to the sides with our red stained glass panes. We're going to place down two coming off these two blocks here. Then we're going to go ahead and place down two red nether brick walls. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, red concrete blocks. Two red nether brick walls and two uh, red stained glass panes. And then an acacia wood trap door like that on the side. We're going to do the same thing over here on this side. So like so, all the way along the side and going to bring us back to this point here. So it's going to look something like that there. After that is all done, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number two. Again, you're going to basically make sure both sides are the same and this is what it should look like for the top down view. With that though, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to begin with, we're going to place down a black concrete block that's going to sit on top of this red concrete block here in the front, followed by a dark oak wood trap door coming off the front and both sides of that block like so. We're going to go then place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23, and 24 black concrete blocks back. And um, let me just go ahead and double check our count here to make sure it's good and it should be 25. So again, we have 25 black concrete blocks in total. Now, after that's done, on the back here, we're going to place down a black stainless pane to both sides of that last block, as well as a dark oak trapdoor coming off the back here. We're going to go and then take our black concrete. We're going to run along the side here from the glass pane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 black concrete blocks, a polished black stone wall, and then a black stained glass pane. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. After that's done, we're gonna go ahead and then go to our second and third black concrete blocks from the back here on the sides, and we're gonna place down dark oak trap doors and make sure they're closed flat. We're gonna go ahead and place down two black stained glass panes going forward from this, and then a polished black stone upside down stair. And this is gonna have an end rod coming off of it. So again, same thing on both sides there, that end rod coming off. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone wall and a black concrete block. Same thing over here, polished black stone wall and a black concrete block. We then want to place down a stair here on both sides. A end rod coming off the stairs. Then we're going to place down there two black concrete blocks. 
polished black stone stair, end rod, polished black stone stair, end rod. We're gonna go for two more black concrete blocks, polished black stone wall, end rod, polished black stone wall, and end rod. We're gonna go then place down black concrete, polished black stone wall, black concrete, and a polished black stone wall. We're gonna go and then place down an upside down stair to both sides. Again, a dark oak, or sorry, an end rod coming off the side there, like so. After we have that done there, uh, we then want to take our black uh, stained glass panes and we're just going to place down two more going forward like so. And then a dark oak wood trap door on the side of this black concrete block there. And after that's all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number uh, three of the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer four. For layer four to start with, we're going to place down a polished black stone wall or slab here on the front. Then a item frame. And then a block of gold in the item frame, we're going to go and rotate at an angle like so. This is also going to have a dark oak wood sign on the sides of the slabs. And also if you're on Java, you can place down a sign here on the front of the slab as well, facing forward. Again, if you're not on Java, you won't be able to place down the sign, but you can place down the item frame and that's good enough. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of these glass panes. And then just a kind of straight uh, skull directly after that. We're going to place down a birchwood slab here, and then we're going to go ahead and place down a stone cutter like this here in the center. Going back from the stone cutter, we're going to place down a birchwood slab and then a birchwood slab to both sides, followed by a quartz, smooth quartz stair. Make sure you use smooth quartz throughout the rest of the, this build here. And then a slab to both sides, like so. And then we're going to be going ahead and using our dark oak wood signs, and we're going to go ahead and place them on the sides here of the birchwood. Then we want to go ahead and place down a uh, another smooth quartz block that's going to sit right here. So you have that smooth quartz full block and it's going to have a direct wall to both sides. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, wall on the back here as well and then a birchwood slab to the sides there of that like that. So it's going to look like that there. Now, after that's done, we're going to go ahead and then take our Wither Skeleton Skulls. We're going to place down a skull again at a slight angle like that on the first pane, and then just straight on for the second one. So again, like that to the sides. After that, we're going to take our Smooth Quartz. We're going to place down a row of three of blocks across, and then another Birchwood Slab to the sides. Again, a Dark Oak sign on the side of those slabs. After that, uh, we're going to place down a Smooth Quartz block, a Direct Wall, Smooth Quartz block, and then we're going to place down two, three, four, five, six, and seven of those blocks. And then our direct wall and our smooth quartz full block. We're going to do the same thing over here on this side. Now after that's done, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves our stripped birch wood. And we're going to be going ahead and using the logs. And we're going to go ahead and place them down going across like this. Across this whole top section here for the upper deck here. And make sure that you try to keep these all consistent. So what I mean by that is all facing the same direction because if you change the way you place them, you can see here it kind of looks a little bit different, changes the pattern. You want that consistent pattern going all the way across to make it kind of look good and blend a lot better. Now after that's done there, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves um, end rods. And we're going to place down end rods coming off these two blocks on either end. So after those walls. Then across this middle section, we're going to place down a tripwire hook here. Skip a space, tripwire hook, skip a space, tripwire hook, skip a space, tripwire hook. So it's going to kind of be uh, one block space between each of these all the way along the side here. So you can see they're all spaced out and they all look um, look good. And those are your smaller guns right there. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of smooth quartz across this space here in the center. And then again, we'll be placed down a birchwood slab to both sides with a dark oak wood sign on the side here of those slabs. We then want to place down a uh, wall that's going to be here in the center. Smooth quartz full block and a direct wall to both sides and then a smooth quartz stair here. We're going to go and then place down a birchwood slab around the corners just like that. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down a wither skeleton skull here. And then one at a slight angle and same thing is going to be done over here on this side. Like so. Once uh, that's done there, we're going to take our birchwood slabs, we're going to place down two rows of three across this space here, and then one here in the center. In these corners on the glass panes, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull at a 45 degree angle there in the corners. And then taking our dark oak wood signs, we're going to go ahead and place them along these three slabs here, this slab on the back, and again, these three slabs over here on this side as well. Like so. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and finish this off here with an end rod on top of this slab here, and an end rod also on top of the slab on the front there. And once you have that all done there, that's gonna wrap that up for that. Uh, one of the last things to do here is to go ahead and make some banners. Now these banners are really simple. They're a black banner with just a white line across the top. It's across the top third, not splitting the banner directly in half, so you should have a little bit of black that sticks up from the midway point on the banner. But this here is just going to go on the walls and these three smooth quartz blocks on the sides and the wall over here. So just go ahead and make sure you um, put that banner there on the sides and everything like that. Anyways though, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number three of the build. Here is a top down view of what it should look like. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a quartz stair on top of this full block here, followed by an upside down stair here on the back. We're also going to place down wither skeleton skulls on the sides of those stairs and um, like that. We're going to go ahead and place down two birchwood fence gates going forward from the stair, opening these fence gates here toward the stair itself. We're going to go and then place down a row three of walls across this space. Then we're going to follow that up with a um, piston that's going to sit on top here. If you don't have access to a debug stick, um, so if you're not on Java, then I would recommend going ahead and just using a quartz full block instead. We then want to place down two iron trap doors to the sides here, like so. And on the bottom of these iron trap doors, we're going to go and be placing down a lever. And uh, we do want to make sure the lever is facing toward the walls, so you might have to kind of do some finagling to get that to fit right, but you want them to look like that there on the sides. Then on the front here of the piston, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame. And a birchwood sign. If you're on Java, an item frame. And then in the item frame, we're going to place on a black bed, rotated sideways, and a birchwood sign if you're on Java. After that is all complete there, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves another brick wall and some skeleton skulls. We're going to place down another brick wall here in the center, um, like so. And then we want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this narrow brick wall. Um, after that is done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, lever to both sides on top of those blocks like that. If you're on Java, we can also place down an item frame underneath those levers to kind of help create like a little bit of a emplacement or something like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, quartz slab after the narrow brick wall there with a skeleton skull to both sides. Uh, we then want to place down a black concrete block here and we're going to go ahead and then place down a quartz stair after the black concrete block. This quartz stair is going to have skeleton skulls on both sides of it as well. After that's done, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves some end rods and some spruce slabs. We're going to place down an end rod on these two walls. We're going to place down two spruce top slabs going back and then an end rod on the end there. Now, if you are on Java, we can also place down item frames underneath the um, slabs, which kind of helps keep that deck color a little bit more consistent. And we can just place down some yellow stained glass panes in them, like so, just to kind of help uh, blend it into the deck just a little bit more. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and skip space from the stair here. So we're going to go ahead and go to the second block here. We're going to place down a black concrete block. And then we want to go ahead and place down a quartz slab going back from it. So we have a quartz slab, birchwood fence gate. We're going to open that fence gate up toward the front of the build as well. We then want to go ahead and take our spruce wood. We're going to place down two top slabs like this. And then a end rod on both sides of the black concrete. So same thing will be done over here on this side for spruce wood top slabs. We also want to place down one and two birch brush plates, one and two. And then a end rod on both sides here as well. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a spruce top slab. Coming off those end rods. And then another end rod here on top of those walls. Uh, once that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down uh, two daylight detectors like this going down the center. And we then want to place down a skeleton skull on both sides here. After that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down an air brick wall. It's going to go, or an air brick fence post, sorry, that's going to go in between those skeleton skulls. And then on the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down our row of three of diorite walls. This here will have a skeleton skull on top in the middle, and then we're going to place down our two iron trap doors to the sides. And again, we want to do the same thing we did before with our with our lever. So again, you might need to break some blocks, kind of finagle your way in. But we're going to place down our levers so that they're flicked inwards, like that. So just like that. And then the last thing we have to do here for this layer is going to be to go ahead and set up our turret here. Um, 
which is pretty straightforward. Same thing as the front, we're gonna place it on a stair here, stair on the back, two uh, skeleton schools coming off the sides there, and then two fence gates coming off and going forward, opened up toward this, this stair. So it should look something like that there. Um, and again, for my uh, or for everybody, we are going to go ahead and place down a lever here on top of these blocks as well. And also, we're going to go ahead and put an item frame for my Java players underneath those as well. And also, again, underneath these spruce wood slabs, if you're on Java, we'll place down an item frame and a yellow stained glass pane in it like that to go ahead and finish those off. Um, after that's all done, though, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number five of the build. Here is a top-down view of what it should look like so far. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers of the build. All right, guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers 6 through 13. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and grab our narrow brick fence post. We're going to place down one, two, and um, three blocks going up. We then want to go ahead and place down a polished blackstone wall, and then we're going to have a end rod to both sides of the wall. We're going to go ahead and then go up with two end rods, and then we're going to go ahead and go up two iron bars. Then on the iron bar here, we're going to place down a end rod to both sides as well. After that's done, we're going to be going ahead and using barrier blocks. Um, these barrier blocks can be also substituted for structure blocks. Basically, you just want an invisible block um, and something that you can connect buttons to. We're going to place down two barrier blocks here that are going to be between these end rods. We're going to place down buttons here on the sides of the barrier blocks like that. Then going down, we're going to go ahead and take our barrier blocks and we're going to place down one, two, three and we're going to go ahead and do one two three we're going to place down two buttons here then two and three buttons across and then one button on the outside and we're going to do the same thing over here on this side as well again this is all for our rigging of our ship so again we have our two buttons we have our three and then our one on that side like that so that's what it's going to look like there from the front now after that's done we're going to go ahead and take our barrier blocks we're going to place down two they're going to come off that wall going forward we're going to go ahead and then drop down and do another row of two. Then another row of two, drop down. And then we're going to have one right here. Now on the both sides of this, of this block here, we're going to place down a button. Then we're going to place down a button on the bottom of this block. And again, to both sides of the second block. Button on the bottom of this one. Uh, button on both sides of the second one. Bottom on the button on the bottom of this one and again a button on both sides of this second block here. For your next line going up we're going to go ahead and go to this barrier block. We're going to place down a button on both sides of this one and then we're going to go ahead and go back from it. So kind of up at an angle here and then a button on both sides and we're going to go ahead and take this uh, line and just kind of do a angle. So it's going to be a staircase of one block going up at a time all the way up until we connect to this iron bar here. And again, it's going to be on both sides here of the barrier blocks all the way up. So it's going to look something that looks just like that there for your front rigging. After that's done, uh, for our, our funnels here, we're going to go ahead and build one and two black concrete blocks up. One and two. And then taking our birchwood buttons, we're going to go ahead and wrap them around the top of the first one. So it's going to wrap around to all the sides like that. On top of that, we're going to place down wither skeleton skulls. And also, we want to grab some flower pots, and we're going to place down flower pots here on top of the zombie heads, or the skeleton skulls. And also on top of this fence gate here on the back. And these two skeleton skulls on the back here as well. So, just like that. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, and three. Fence posts going up right here. We're going to do the same thing that we did for the front, a polished black stone wall. And from that, our two end rods. So, we have one, two. And then our two iron bars up from that. Again, we have our end rods on both sides of this wall here. And our end rods on both sides of this fence gate. Or this um, iron bar here. So it looks like that. After that's done there, we're going to go ahead and then take our barrier blocks. We're going to place down two barrier blocks in between those end rods up here on the top. We're going to place down buttons here on the side. And buttons on the two sides facing the back. So like that. And again, we're going to do our uh, barrier blocks going down. We're going to have two right here, right above the flower pot. And then we're going to have three, like this, to the side. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down our two buttons. Then we have our three, and then our one on the outside. And again, same thing over here, like so. And that's going to form your uh, rigging there from the mass. 
Now with that done, we're going to do a line of barrier blocks from this um, polished black snow wall all the way back to the rear mast and we're going to have buttons on the sides there of those blocks all the way down and same thing over here. Then on the top, we're going to do a row of barrier blocks from this iron bar all the way down, connect it to this one and then our buttons all the way along the side. Same thing over here. Then after that, uh, the last thing to do is our last piece of rigging here. It's going to be one block coming off this wall. We're going to drop down, do a row of two, drop down a row of two, and drop down for a row of one. We're going to place down a button on both sides of this last block here, button on the bottom of this block, both sides of this block, bottom of this one, both sides of this one here, and then on the bottom of this one like that. And once you have that all done, that right there is going to complete the rigging for your ship. And with that, that is going to wrap up my tutorial or close to it. Um, one quick thing here is if you are on Java, I would recommend typing the command at or slash give at p minecraft phone debug underscore stick. This command here, press and enter. What you're going to do here is you're going to go and go to these pistons here. You're going to left click these to get select the extended false prompt pop up. You'll then right click it and get rid of that wood portion. And the same thing will be done for this one on the bottom here. Also, for these uh, tripwire hooks, you can left click these as well to get selected attached false. We'll right click this, set this to true. And what it does here is it actually extends the tripwire hook out uh, a little bit and kind of helps make these guns look a little bit more believable like that. So you can do that on both sides there uh, as well. Anyways, though, that right there is going to wrap up my tutorial here for the IJN Mikasa. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do have use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This can be thank you from a sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appreciate social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary2F4, and I'll see you guys next time.